Hello everyone, this is Abhay Sharma and welcome to Thinking Penguin. Animation Notes is an add-on for Blender created by Jax Luke. If you want to know more about Animation Notes, check out the links in the description. This tutorial is intended for, uh, for those artists who are not just want to learn how to use Animation Notes but also interested in knowing how things work under the hood. If you are familiar with note systems like Houdini or Ice in Softimage, this tutorial is going to be boring for you. In this video, I will be talking about data types in animation nodes. And basically, there are four types. Integers Floats Booleans and strings. Everything else is made out of these basic types. Let's go full screen. You can see this tiny heads up display which tells you how fast or slow your node tree is being evaluated. If you go to the settings, uh, let's go to the animation nodes. Auto execution is set to always which is self explanatory. If you uncheck that it will enable three boxes. Tree change means whenever you make any change in your node tree like connecting or disconnecting nodes, it will update. Frame changed updates your node tree whenever you change the frame in timeline. And property change will update whenever you change any property. I'm gonna set this to always. Now all the nodes in animation nodes are color coded. Uh, like this blue for integers, violet for floats, yellow for booleans and white for strings. There are other nodes as well, we'll see that later. Now if a node has single value, it's going to be 100% opaque flat color. But if it contains more than one value for the same data type, it's going to be same color but transparent. So if I create an integer list, you can see it has more than one value. Input color is 100% opaque blue and output color is transparent blue. Okay, one thing you're gonna find very useful when you start working with nodes is this debug output. Just hover your cursor over the node and press and hold the W key and choose debug, which gives you the exact picture of what's happening in the node. All right, let's talk about integers. Integers are whole numbers or numbers without decimal point basically used for counting. For example, how many people are in the room? Or how many stones have you thrown in the water? Or let's say how many steps have you taken from point A to point B, regardless of step size. It can be positive or negative. In real world, it's infinite, but in computers, it has a limit. Okay, so let's see a basic example. So I'm going to create a transform output node. Turn on location XYZ and select our cube. Let's connect our integer to location. You can see the color of the input is dark blue or navy blue, which represents a vector. We'll talk about vector just in a second. It will automatically insert a combined vector node. I'm going to connect it to the Z value. By the way, you can disconnect the nodes by pressing the control key plus left mouse drag over the noodle. One thing to notice here is the input color of the combined vector node is violet, which means a float value. But it can accept integers. It converts from integer to float internally. We'll talk about conversions in next tutorial. Now if I change the integer value, you can see it's moving exactly one unit apart in Z axis. If you look around the Blender's interface, you will find many integer type values like this resolution field. Okay, let's move on to the floats.
Floats are numbers with decimal points. We need floats for precision. In real world, precision is infinite. But in computers, it has a limit. Let's say you moved from point A to point B in 5 steps. But steps can be bigger or smaller. We cannot use it to determine the distance. For distance or displacement, we have to use floats, right? Because we need accuracy. The difference between integers and floats is very important to understand. Let's say someone asks me how many numbers in between 0 to 3. Well, if it's an integer, it's two numbers, 1 and 2. But if it's a float, that's a difficult question. Let's simplify the problem. How many numbers are between 0 and 1? And the answer depends on level of precision, meaning how many zeros you put after decimal point. Precision can be infinite in real world. So basically, there are infinite numbers between 0 and 1. That's why it's called floating, because it's not fixed. Alright, let's connect this to Z value. It's a straight float to float, no conversion. Let's change the values. I hope you get the idea. In Blender you can see all the transformation values are floats. Alright, next is boolean. Booleans are very interesting. A boolean value has only two state, true or false, or 0 and 1, or yes and no, or on and off, etc. Anything that has only two states. Basically, it's the core of computing. You can express any idea in sequences of zeros and ones. It's actually core of any logical entity not necessarily just computers for example morse code let's see how can we use it if you look around you will find many boolean type values like this one let's control that with our boolean node right click and choose copy data path and i'm going to create a node called object attribute output i'm going to select my cube and paste the attribute data here connect the boolean to value and now you can control the display of the name of the cube in the viewport. We'll take a look at booleans and boolean operators in depth in future tutorials. Next we have strings or texts. Strings are arrays of characters. A character can be a numeral or alphabet or a special symbol, anything that you can type from your keyboard. Let's delete this cube and create a text object. Let's create a text output node here. Connect the string to the text and turn on the text switch. Okay, so these are the basic data types. We have more types, but they are all composed of these four types. Let's take a look at vectors. I'm going to create a combined vector node. You can see it's made of three floating point numbers. If you create a debug node, you can see it holds three numbers. Let me create an object transform output and connect the vector to location. So all three floating point values are passed through this one vector output node. 
So any point in 3D space can be expressed by a vector. Let me give you a different example. Let's create is empty. Empty has no shape, it's just a transformation node. Let's import the 3D position of this empty in animation nodes. So I'll create a object transform input. Select our empty. Now if I debug and choose location, you can see it's a vector. Now let's see rotation. Turn on rotation x, y, z. Rotation is also a vector but it's slightly different. Uh, let's go to the rotation menu and create a combine Euler. Euler is a vector rotation type with gimbal lock problem. If you are a rigger you know what I'm talking about. But you can see it's also composed of three floating point numbers. Let's turn on a scale. It's a vector type. You can control it with vector. You can also have quaternion rotation type which is composed of four floating point numbers which gives you a matrix output. Okay, let's see matrix. Well, consider vectors as containers which can hold three values. Matrix is a bigger container which can hold more than three values. In fact, it can contain entire transformation of an object like position, rotation, scaling, all in one matrix table. Let's create a translation matrix and let's connect the vector to translation. And let's see the output. It has a 4x4 four four matrix table. Let's see a side by side comparison. Now let's create a compose matrix node. You can see it can take translation, rotation and scale and converts into one matrix output. So I'm gonna connect the vector to translation, Euler to rotation You can use object matrix output to control the objects in 3D scene, but let's see the matrix table and how it's composed of. Okay, and there are many others and colors, but if you break them down into basic components, you'll get integers, floats, booleans, and strings. That's it. Alright guys, that's it for this part. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then give this video a thumbs up, subscribe this channel, and give your feedback. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.